but the date on which petroleum can be taxed under GST will be decided by the GST council. The composition of the council is such that it makes a, it actually makes effective the whole concept of cooperative federalism. <coughs> Two third of the representation will be of the states and one third of the center. So the center has a one-third representation, the states have a two-third representation, and all decisions require a 75% vote to be cleared. So the majority of the states can't push a decision, the center alone can't put a, push a decision, but the two collectively can push a decision. And therefore the states and the center will collectively decide, and no one can arbitrarily decide when to do it. And similarly, all other decisions of the of the finer print of the GST when it's implemented. Having got over these two issues, there were state-specific issues. And the state-specific issues were with regard to octoroy in the octoroy charging states or entry tax with regard to the manufacturing states who fear that initially their taxation may come down, to agricultural producing states uh, who felt that purchasing tax uh, once subsumed will cost them revenue. Now this was a key concern and then there was a collective concern what happens if uh, the actual tax collected by a state goes down. I have always called it the fear of the unknown. This was there at the time of VAT, it is there now. And therefore, collectively we arrived at a formulation. There will be taxes which the states are not entitled to, which they will be now entitled to, service tax. <laughs> And a large share comes from uh, Maharashtra, some share comes from Karnataka. So their octroi loss will be more than compensated. <coughs> Secondly, for a two-year period, <coughs> with a sunset clause, to give them initial comfort, we have provided for an additional 1% SGST. Additional tax. Additional tax, we call it, not SGST. That's the wrong phrase that I've used.